Welcome back. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Skhir Palace, Japan's ambassador to Bahrain, Miyamoto Masayuki. His Majesty welcomed the ambassador and reviewed the course of bilateral relations and praised their advanced levels as well as their development in many sectors, thanks to the keenness of the two friendly countries. His Majesty commended the Japanese ambassador's efforts in advancing partnership between Bahrain and Japan, wishing him further success in performing his duties. The Japanese ambassador expressed thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his keenness to enhance the historic and friendship relations and developing cooperation at all levels. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa launched the second edition of Cityscape Bahrain 2023 at Exhibition World Bahrain in Sakhir. His Royal Highness highlighted the efforts of Team Bahrain in achieving national accomplishments and furthering the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness affirmed the Kingdom's commitment to furthering its development by launching and implementing projects that support various industries, including the real estate sector, and boost the national economy. His Royal Highness highlighted that the Kingdom's skilled, creative and dedicated workforce has helped strengthen Bahrain's aspirations and global position as a host of international conferences and exhibitions. His Royal Highness highlighted that Bahrain is diversifying its economy through innovation and multi-sector development. He noted that the Kingdom's private sector is steadily growing due to a comprehensive integrated regulatory and legislative system and the various investment opportunities provided by the Kingdom, particularly in the real estate sector. He expressed gratitude to those responsible for the exhibition wishing them further success. His Royal Highness commended Cityscape Bahrain for enhancing the Kingdom's position as a global investment destination, with real estate being one of the vital sectors driving economic growth. For his part, the President of the Survey and Land Registration Bureau and Chairman of the Supreme Committee for Preparation and Organizing of the event, Sheikh Salman bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the Kingdom's real estate sector is a vital sector that drives economic growth, thanks to the support of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness. He highlighted the importance of Cityscape Bahrain as a destination for major real estate companies to showcase the Kingdom's top innovative projects that benefit all. He noted that the Kingdom's real estate sector is based on a solid legislative base protecting all rights, which contributed to Bahrain being a lucrative global destination for investment. Cityscape Bahrain is the biggest real estate event in the Kingdom of Bahrain, featuring real estate projects worth more than $8 billion. In its second edition, Cityscape Bahrain 2023 has more than 58 real estate projects, including public sector entities and local and global private large real estate developers. The exhibition provides a wide range of opportunities for investors, architects, engineering, consultants, contractors, investors, and property buyers. It also includes a number of investment opportunities presented by the Government Land Investment Platform. His Royal Highness was accompanied by a number of senior officials.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa launched the Jewelry Arabia and Saint Arabia 2023 exhibitions at the Exhibition World Bahrain in Sakhir. His Royal Highness highlighted Team Bahrain's efforts in ensuring the Kingdom's progress towards development goals led by the vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted the Kingdom's commitment to doubling its efforts and expanding economic opportunities for citizens. He emphasized that the Kingdom continues to strengthen its position worldwide as a result of the state-of-the-art exhibition facilities, the competitiveness of its national workforce, streamlined services, and its impactful creativity and innovation environment. He commended the efforts and dedication of the exhibition organizers and noted the historic success of these exhibitions over the past 30 years. During the visit, His Royal Highness was briefed on the exhibition halls of this year's competi competitive exhibition, which has contributed to the development of the Kingdom's tourism sector. For his part, the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, affirmed that Bahrain's success of hosting the yearly Jewelry Arabia exhibition and the Saint Arabia exhibition reflects the public sector's commitment, led by His Royal Highness, to support local and international exhibitions and their competitiveness. Fakhro noted the importance of exhibitions and conferences in supporting the Kingdom's comprehensive development. He emphasized that the Kingdom's national workforce continues to excel across various sectors, adding that the Kingdom's attractive environment has helped to hold major exhibitions and has supported trade and economic activity. Jewelry Arabia 2023 includes a large collection of jewelry, watches, precious stones and other items from all over the world, in addition to a number of new participating brands in the exhibition. Saint Arabia 2023 will also be held in conjunction with Jewelry Arabia. It, it is the first luxury perfumes exhibition in the Kingdom. His Royal Highness was accompanied by a number of senior officials.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 103 of 2023, amending Article 2 of Edict 35 of 2023 on establishing and forming the National Human Rights Committee based on a proposal by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and following the approval of the Cabinet. The edict stipulates the following. Article 1. The text of the first clause of the first paragraph for Article 2 of Edict 35 of 2023 shall be replaced with the following text. 1. Under Secretary for Planning, Family Reconciliation and Alimony at the Ministry of Justice, Islamic Affairs and Endowments. Article 2. A new clause, number 6, shall be added to the first paragraph of Article 2 of Edict 35 of 2023, and the rest of the clauses shall be rearranged accordingly. A third paragraph shall be added to the same article, which reads as follows. Article 2. First paragraph, clause number 6. Director General of Legal Affairs and Human Rights at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Article 2, third paragraph, the committee shall select a vice chairman for its members and entrust them with the duty of the chairman of the event of his absence. The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the president of the Children of Asia Games International Committee, Vladimir Maskimov and the accompanying delegation. His Highness praised the efforts of the committee in organizing a number of sports programs and activities for children. His Highness affirmed that BOC pays great attention to children from an early age in order to enhance their skills and talents to create a promising sports generation. He added that Bahrain organizes several sporting activities in this regard as Bahrain is preparing to host the international school games in 2024, which reflects the kingdom's keenness to support children. His Highness then discussed cooperation and joint coordination aspects that will contribute to creating numerous programs and activities for children. He expressed appreciation for the efforts of the committee and wished it further success. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed Lamsalam, pre presided over the Council's weekly session. The Council discussed the report of the committee preparing for draft response for the royal speech of the new session. The Council also discussed proposals including amending some provisions of the Social Insurance Law, the Social Protection Law and the Public Utilities and Environment Committee Law, which is about the Real Estate Registration Law. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa delegated the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa to attend the ceremony organized by Bahrain Marina at Bahrain National Theatre yesterday to lay the foundation stone for the Bahrain Marina project. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah affirmed that His Royal Highness's patronization of the ceremony reflects the support of Bahrain led by His Majesty the King and the follow-up of His Royal Highness for development and strategic projects aimed at diversifying the national economy and developing the real estate sector. The Deputy Premier noted that the East Coast will witness a quantum leap when the Bahrain Marina project is completed. He highlighted the government's keenness on expanding its partnerships with private sector institutions to ensure the sustainability and development of the infrastructure and create promising job and investment opportunities. The President of Bahrain Marina, Khalid Najibi, expressed thanks to His Royal Highness for patronizing the ceremony, hailing the efforts exerted to strengthen Bahrain's economic environment.
Bahrain marks World Diabetes Day, which comes this year under the theme Access to Diabetes Care. The chairman of the Supreme Council of Health and president of the Bahrain Diabetes Society, Lieutenant General Sheikh Dr. Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain pays great attention to diabetics. He explained that the kingdom has developed national plans to combat diabetes by implementing measures aimed at developing comprehensive responses to reduce the rate of diabetes and obesity. He noted the importance of reviewing commitment to integrate diabetes into broader health policies, strategies and plans, especially under Bahrain's National Project for Integrated and Comprehensive Healthcare, to enhance health awareness in everything related to chronic non-communicable diseases, including diabetes, obesity and the risk factors that lead to them. The chairman stressed that this year's theme was chosen with the aim of increasing community awareness about this disease to protect people from contracting diabetes and help diabetics reduce the disease complications. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Daina, and in the presence of the Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah Fakhro, opened the 18th Middle East Corrosion Conference and Exhibition. The Minister of Oil welcomed Bahrain's continued hosting of the Middle East Conferences and Exhibitions on Metal Corrosion since 1979, which affirms the Kingdom's good reputation in holding events in various fields and sectors, including oil. He pointed out the importance of discussing metal corrosion, stressing the importance of learning about modern techniques and studies, in addition to practice methods of preventing corrosion and rust. He expressed thanks and appreciation to the organizers, the supporting companies, speakers and exhibit, exhibiting companies, and to all who contributed to the success of this conference. Dr. Bendaina also opened the accompanying exhibition in which more than 78 industrial companies from 23 countries participated. Information Minister Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi attended the opening ceremony of the second edition of the Global Media Congress GMC 2023, which was held in Abu Dhabi. The three-day event will be held under the patronage of the Vice President of the UAE, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of the Presidential Court, His Highness Sheikh Mansour bin Zayed Al Nahyan. The minister pointed out that the GMC 2023 is an opportunity to exchange ideas and experiences that open horizons for contributing to the development of media work and enhancing its ability to deal with various challenges facing media. Dr. Naimi stressed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, is paying great attention to the media sector. He noted the continuous development witnessed by the UAE in the media field and in its interest in investing in this vital sector to be more able to carry out its cultural and development missions. The Crown Prince of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Mish'al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, received the President of the Asian Football Confederation and Senior Vice President of the FIFA Council, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, on the occasion of his visit to the country. Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Kuwaiti Crown Prince for the warm welcome and generous hospitality during the meeting attended by the Assistant President of the Asian Football Confederation, Wahid Al Doi, the Director of the Office of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Retired Lieutenant General Jamal Al Diab, and the Under Secretary of the Foreign Affairs of the Office of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Mazen Al Isa. The Prime Minister of Kuwait, His Highness Sheikh Ahmed Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Sabah, yesterday received the President of the Asian Football Confederation and Senior Vice President of the FIFA Council, Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa. Sheikh Salman bin Ibrahim expressed thanks and appreciation to the Kuwaiti Premier for the warm welcome and generous hospitality. During the meeting, attended by Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Sheikh Ahmed Al Fahd Al Sabah, and the Director of the Office of His Highness the Prime Minister, Hamad Al Amr. Bahrain Ambassador to Belgium and the European Union, Abdullah Dostari, met with the Director of the Council of the European Commissioner for Trade, Michael Hager. The meeting discussed a number of relevant regional and international topics and developments of common interest. The Ambassador highlighted the importance of the topics to be discussed in the seventh business forum between the European Union and the GCC countries. These topics include building a sustainable and diversified future and stimulating economic diversification, innovation and strategies for logistics services. The International Human Rights Procedures and Mechanisms Workshop, organized by the Special Investigation Unit in cooperation with the UNDP and the Human Rights Affairs of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, concluded. More in this report. 
To find out the special procedures followed by international mechanisms and following up on human rights and national obligations towards them, and to discuss best practices for preparing responses to international inquiries and reports, the International Human Rights Procedures and Mechanisms Workshop came with the aim of strengthening justice and the rule of law in Bahrain. Uh, Bahrain has paid uh, great attention uh, to human rights. This specialized uh, workshop uh, is being held under the title uh, International Procedures and Mechanisms for Human Rights. Uh, and it was uh, attended by a number of international experts, representatives, and all members of uh, uh, relevant uh, national uh, authorities and uh, civil society organizations, and the participants around uh, 70 people. And uh, we seek uh, through this workshop is to enhance uh, Bahrain uh, efforts related uh, to human rights. This workshop covered several specialized sessions, the most prominent of which were the United Nations mechanisms concerned with human rights and a review of the Kingdom of Bahrain's experience in dealing with those mechanisms. Uh, today the workshop was about human rights in international law, an important UN mechanism and how to apply it by countries. I would like to uh, thank the organizers and also to congratulate Kingdom of Bahrain for its achievement in human rights, especially the adoption of the national plan uh, in human rights 2226 and the adoption of its report to PR and I would like to wish the Kingdom more progress as possible. Prosperity. The workshop came up with several insights, the most prominent of which was the importance of continuing to strengthen relations with various United Nations mechanisms concerned with human rights, in addition to emphasizing the continuation of appropriate training and intensifying work and commitment to implementing the recommendations of the Universal Periodic Review of Human Rights Mechanism. Since its inception, the National Audit Office has played an important role in preserving public funds and verifying the integrity and legitimacy of its spending and good management. More on this report. The directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to government agencies to adopt a new methodology in dealing with the remarks of the National Audit Office have paid off, as they contributed to improving the performance of government entities, becoming more efficient and professional, as confirmed by the 20th NAO report. This has enhanced efforts to continue preserving public funds in accordance with a robust financial and administrative system and through coordination with all government agencies with the participation of the Central Internal Audit Directorate to review and analyze all remarks while ensuring that the necessary measures are taken immediately in accordance to a comprehensive time and plan to ensure the implementation of the recommendations. This proves the success of the new methodology in making optimal investment in available resources and ensuring that they are used for the purposes allocated to them in an appropriate manner, according to a clear mechanism that guarantees immediate and urgent verification in accordance with the relevant laws in a way that achieves the public interests.